If I buy Bitcoin, am I buying a share of stock or am I buying a pork belly or am I buying uh, euros? Or am Are I buying? you buying air? U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren is waging a full-on war against Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. This is not hyperbole. This is what she tweeted just today. Elizabeth Warren is building an anti-crypto army. See, you might know Senator Elizabeth Warren for focusing on other things. Maybe you know her because she's been largely in favor of holding banks and Wall Street accountable for their actions, and that's okay. And there were a lot of progressives who really wanted to rein in Wall Street, but I was the one who got in there. I did the hard work, I dug in, I took on Wall Street, I took on the big banks. Maybe you know her from her back and forth feuds with former President Donald Trump. This is another case of Donald Trump just trying to advance the interests of Donald Trump, not of the rest of the nation. She of the great tribal heritage. What tribe is it? Uh, let me think about that one. What you might not have realized is that killing Bitcoin and crypto is on her list of things to do. Not just regulating crypto, killing it. How you want to regulate that world and how you want to build regulation, like I said, depends on what you're trying to accomplish here. I think that world should be largely cut off, but not everyone agrees with that. Why does Elizabeth Warren want to kill crypto? Maybe it's because she's planning to run for U.S. president. You're right, Lawrence. This is a part of why I'm running for president. And she knows that the powers that be expect certain things from her. Let's do a central bank digital currency. Warren understands that if she's to become president, she must be in favor of CBDC's central bank digital currencies. And it seems like she's not just for them, she's giddy for them. So a lot that banks do wrong, if you think we could improve that in a digital world, the answer is sure you could. But in that case, let's do a central bank digital currency. Are you there? Oh, for a central bank digital currency? Yeah. Yes. I think it's time. She loves CBDCs because governments control it, because banks back it. We could be talking about, instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency because yeah. that's a government backed mm -hmm. Um, uh, electronic transfer. And it can be denominated in dollars, it could be denominated in euros, but that has something that backs it up. It has a government that says, if at the end of the day there's a run on this stuff, everybody wants theirs out, the United States government promises there will be something to back it up. Um, and uh, that's what banks are about. There'll be somebody there to back it up. So why doesn't Elizabeth Warren like crypto? What's her problem with it? It opens the doors to... There's another part of the crypto world that says, no, we like it. That nobody can tell who came on this system and what they're using this system for. They would describe it as getting away of the prying eyes of the government. But another way to say that is, yeah, opening up the door to the money launderers, to the human traffickers, to the, um, uh, to the tax cheats, to the countries that are trying to evade sanctions. And so how you want to regulate that world and how you want to build regulation, like I said, depends on what you're trying to accomplish here. I think that world should be largely cut off from the cheats and from the money launderers but not everyone agrees with that. She wants to kill it. Here Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren create fear, uncertainty, doubt, doom and gloom. What happens if everybody just decides to sell their Bitcoin one day? Do you think the digital space is so big that it could create a, di uh, a credit default swap-like impact on our economy if, it, if, suddenly, if suddenly a whole bunch of holders of Bitcoin decided, hmm, maybe this is air? Yeah. Senator Warren says it's air. <laughs> Maybe it is. I'm out. And as soon as enough people start saying I'm out, I mean, look, this has worked. The whole digital world has worked very much like a bubble works. And that is it keeps going up based on what? Based on additional production? No, based on the fact that it has demonstrated that it solved all these other problems and it is now being used exponentially in areas where it hadn't been used before. Not really. What is it 
moved up on? It's moved up on the fact that people all tell each other that it's going to be great. Just again, like it was on that real estate market. I, how many times did people say real estate always goes up? It never goes down. They said it decades ago before the last real estate bubble. They said it in the 2000s before the crash in 2008. Wait till real estate meets climate change. That's <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's a whole separate yeah, thing. That's yeah. right. But, but that is the ultimate risk because there's no government to back it up. There's no commodity to back it up, whether it's gold or wheat or anything else. There's, there's nothing at the end of the day except confidence that it's going to go up. And if people lose that confidence, then it's gone. I believe, what is the shorthand for confidence gain? Sorry. <laughs> um, it, which is, and it, you know, I, I, I do. I hadn't I, thought about that before. Yeah, no, I yes. do remind people of the words confidence. Mm -hmm. It gets shortened a lot. And then that's right. That's where that's the word right. con comes in. I mean, real estate, although it fluctuates like any asset, that's a good idea, Elizabeth. I like this next question that Chuck Schumer asks her. What if you're wrong? What if you don't know everything about everything? What if you're wrong about Bitcoin? I don't like her answer. Have you, have you looked at this and said, what if I'm wrong? What if they're right? And how, how could you be wrong here? I, I'm trying, and I say this, and I'm not saying you are. But okay, so let's, let's do uh, let's say this is Russia. A yeah, okay. Let's, let's do right now. Uh, we know, for example, that Iran and uh, North Korea uh, use cryptocurrencies to evade financial sanctions. Mm -hmm. um, we not a lot, though. It turned out to be, it is a smaller amount chunk than, than folks thought. <laughs> But, we hope. but they are using yeah. them to yeah. evade financial sanctions, yeah. right? Um, we also know that Russia is involved in about three quarters of all the ransomware payoffs going on around the country. So in other words, these guys, are, the Russians are very sophisticated on uh, uh, dealing with crypto. They clearly have demonstrated they're willing to engage in the illegal portion of the, the spectrum. And that countries can use crypto, not totally to substitute for sanctions or totally evade them, but to create a hole in the bucket, right? A, a little opportunity to move money around. We also know, by the way, that, that uh, uh, the, the uh, Bank of Russia has now authorized banks to deal in crypto because they're shut out of the, the banking system. So we see all of those things. My response is to say, along with several other senators, including the head of the Foreign Relations Committee, the head of the Intelligence Committee, the head of Senate Armed Services, to say, you know, let's give Treasury the tools to say that any of the crypto exchanges uh, that are not following knowing their customers and blocking uh, evasion of sanctions can't do business in the United States. Just give them the tool for that. And the response of the crypto company, uh, some of them, crypto advocates, have said, we don't need that. You're wrong. It's not a problem. To which my response is, then you if you are right. right, then you shouldn't mind, you shouldn't mind it, that yeah. we put some regulations in place. If crypto is really not being used by human traffickers and, and money launderers and drug traders and tax cheats, you shouldn't mind that these exchanges have to do know your customer and make sure that on the front end and the back end, as the money comes into the crypto exchange and leaves the crypto exchange, that it's not being used in those ways. By the way, if there's any question in your mind that Elizabeth Warren and the mainstream media, for that matter, have a very surface level understanding of Bitcoin and crypto, listen to this next clip. They talk about Bitcoin and Dogecoin like it's the same thing. So pump and dumps are illegal on the U.S. stock market. Now, how do you stop a Doja coin? Doja coin is like this whole, right, the whole idea, the dog coin, right? That's right. Watch it, and it was, to me, it's like, boy, you really, they really exposed a big flaw in Bitcoin. It, you know, I see it this way. I actually don't think that one exposes a big flaw. It says, guys, this is what you said it is. It is, I made this up and I'm having great fun with it, and people then get engaged and they have confidence in it, so they bid up the value. So Elizabeth Warren, it's kind of a mixed bag in some ways because on the one hand, she has made a name for herself, at least seemingly holding Wall Street's feet to the fire. 
On the other hand, she's also very anti-crypto. Now, crypto wants to hold Wall Street and the traditional financial system, their feet to the fire. The enemy of your enemy is your friend. Not in this case. And her rhetoric, her anti-crypto army and rhetoric is only going to become stronger as we get closer to the U.S. presidential election. Guys, engage with this video. Send this video to your dad. Get this information out there. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're one of the only YouTube channels that covers cryptocurrency like this. Pivoting away from Elizabeth Warren and onto an interesting project in the crypto space, I'd like to highlight a rather promising GameFi project today called Sinverse with the token name Sin. Sinverse is the first R-rated Mafia Metaverse, and they're sponsoring today's video. This is definitely one to keep an eye on, as it's got a lot of exciting developments happening right now. First off, Sinverse had a successful land sale in 2022. They sold out for an impressive $3.5 million. The project is also activating business licenses, which will allow users to start their own gamified R-rated businesses, like strip clubs, like coffee shops, and weapon stores. So you can become the ultimate kingpin if you'd like to get involved in this sinfully fun metaverse project. The fact that you can do this, it's a unique feature that sets Sinverse apart from a lot of others in the space, if not all others, and could potentially lead to massive growth opportunities. I mean, I don't see Sandbox or Decentraland hosting strip clubs and weapons stores. The game is already in its alpha stage and is now beginning its play and earn economy. It looks like Grand Theft Auto on the blockchain, and it could be one of the bigger games in the blockchain gaming category because of this. This makes Sinverse an exciting project, especially with the next gaming bull run on the horizon. I mean, it should appeal at least to a lot of the degen crypto users, at least. Sinverse is listed on major exchanges like KuCoin, Gate, and MXC, and they already offer weekly free play and earn competitions. So make sure you check it out. Keep an eye on the Sin token. I'm gonna to link their website and Twitter and white paper below for your continued education. Get your tickets to Bitcoin 2023 Miami, May 18th through 20th, Miami Beach. This year, use code ALTCOINDAILY, 10% off. This is the biggest Bitcoin conference of the year. Ticket prices continue to increase as we get closer to the event. Use code ALTCOINDAILY, 10% off. Get your tickets now.